Hello, today I'm going to show you the Fremencio workout for valve in valve tower with the Paramount 2700 valve. So this valve is the pre predecessor of the Paramount 2800, the Magna and Magna East valve. So it has the similar kind of signature, but this valve cannot be fractured and it's actually good, but you can be remodeled. So I'll show you how this is done. You can see we already have the main interface showing the segmentation. So first what we do is just like previously, we line up the open circle across one of the commercial poles and then put a dot at the bottom where the frame is and then rotate counterclockwise to the right sinus and put another dot at the base of that frame and then going again to the non-sinus and do the same here. So now you can see we approximately matches it. Next, we're going to try to streamline the center line. You can see I delete some dots here because one of the things you have to be mindful of is that the surgical valve may be a little canted versus the aortic root. So you want to be able to be sure you actually and the center line of the surgical valve itself. So I'm going to basically fine tune this here. So you can see that here, the three dots should disappear. The, the three coming short of post will outline, showing that you're in the center line measurements and you want to be able to just high enough to show that you're above the corners. You can see this is not a center line to the aorta, but rather to the surgical valve. So next I'm going to basically fine tune these dots here. And also remember you want to drop the gain because sometimes you have artifact and booming artifact. So you might be underestimating the actual so, so internal diameter. So I'm going to go near the base of the surgical valve here. And we kind of our quote unquote neo annulus. Remember these valves are super annular valves. So you're not going to be going at the true annulus, but actually more like the annulus of the surgical valve frame. So that looks pretty good. After that, remember, you want to make sure that this is still in the center line. You can see the little bit of crooked there. So you can see they all converge together and they all kind of disappear. So once you have that, you click confirm. And here is your internal diameter of the surgical valve. You can see them sometimes some drop out as well in terms of contrast. So you know from the valve and valve app developed by VD Bapot what the internal diameter is. So we try to match that here. This is a 25 millimeter Paramount 2700. So you expect the internal diameter around 24, sometimes maybe 23. Remember sometimes these valves can be deformed. So my, what you get on the app might not be actually what you're measuring here. But you can see it's pretty close. It's around 24 millimeters here. So you can click that's an annular diameter and then you can put it on your report. I'm going to crop this to enlarge this area and I'm going to do the same thing with the open circle going towards the left main. You can see the left main stand there. And I'm going down to the LVOT. Again, the LVOT in this particular picture is very large. We're less concerned about this in standard surgical valve, but in stainless valve, you're going to be have to measure this to make sure that you are I need to size it accordingly. You can see that here. The LVOT diameter here, it's less relevant, but you can see it's still important too. If I'm going too quickly, you can also look at my other prior videos on how to measure these and also select these. Uh, as you watch all these, uh, these other financial videos, you this steps are pretty consistent. You use a lasso tool that I see here, and then you outline this tracing. Keep in mind, you want to make sure there's no uh, contrast outside this tracing. And then once you complete it, you right click, and then you can label it, as you can see, LVOT diameter, similar to the analyst. 
Next time we go to that side of junction, sometimes they're harder to define, but and also because it's not a center line, you need to see that it's gonna be a little bit offset. So you can see the right corner is a little bit higher up than the left main. So I'm just gonna measure the STJ diameter here and here. You can see I use the ruler with times two so you can get the max and min measurements. And I'm gonna go down here so you can see that this patient has a very short left main with bifurcation with a LAD stent going to the left main. So I'm gonna put this as the left main high. You can see it's only 5.9 millimeters, but remember this is a super end of the valve, so naturally your left main height will be lower than a native anatomy. And you can see this is surgical valve here. And so my sinus of salva will have to match this and I go from a commercial height post to the opposite side. So you can see now the sinus dimensions. So next, I'm gonna go into the top of the valve and look at the valve height. So I'm getting around 12 millimeters here. I do the custom frame length measurement to bring it down. So I'm gonna basically draw a virtual box mimicking the cylinder effect of the after valve in valve tower in putting the valve inside the surgical valve. So you can see the distance here because it's 24 millimeters. So I'll put that in there just to keep that in mind. If you use a balloon expandable valve, you use a 26 millimeter. So you actually stretch beyond this 24 millimeters because the leaflets will actually flare outward a little bit more. So you have to keep that in mind in the case of uh, quarry obstruction risk. Now here's an example where the aortic wood is so large, I don't need to measure the virtual valve to quarry distance. Look at this. Even though left pain height is small, you can see this is low. You can see the distance here is so big, especially when I go to the top of the valve here. There's really no way of risk of quarry obstruction. If you're still concerned, you can certainly do an angiogram and line up two commercial posts on one side based on the left main and an LAO cranial projection. And then you can actually uh, do a select, semi selective wood shot to confirm that. So I'm going to go to measurements and go to ellipse, and then I go make a circle of 24 millimeters. That's the internal diameter. You can do 23 as well, but you can see this 24 here just for sake here. More likely, because it's a 23 millimeter circle, you can do that too. So I'll do that 23 millimeter. And what I'm doing now is trying to see how the valve inside this surgical valve will look like. So I'm going all the way up to 10 millimeters just to see kind of what you saw earlier in the native aortic root analysis. I kind of do the same thing. You can see this huge distance from the left main takeoff. So there's no really concern of cornish obstruction in this case. And you can see that here, STJ sinotubular junction is very big. The sinus for salva is also very big. I put that back in there. And then if you look at the top of the surgical valve frame here, if you do the measurement of the VTC, it's really not necessary, but I'll just show that to you. It's like 8.3 millimeters. So if you look at it here on this side, 8.3 millimeters. So that's plenty of VTC going in there to the uh, left main. So we can take a snapshot here, to show you that. Oops, forgot to put the sign of the salva height here. 
And then if you look at the left main here, now I look at the right, this is the right corner, you take off here. So you can see it's not that realistic because also remember this, we don't have to do VTC because the right corner height is above the surgical valve. So that's completely clear. So there's really no need to measure VT. There's no VTC uh, con here. So I'm going to do the right coronary height measurement. And then you can see now on the AOA. Well, we can see how this is a Paramount 2700. It's just a metal frame. That's why it's not fracturable. And then I'm going to do a sending. Then I'm going to do the hockey pop. And go into a view like this, you can kind of see what it looks like and any leaf calcification. One thing before I forget, I'm going to save this VTC to the left main just for illustration purposes. Remember, this is so big that really not relevant. So now I'm going to go to the cold planar view, you can see that here. Now remember, you might not get the actual midline, the midpoint of the, each base of the sinus. So you need to use the fluoroscopic signature to see that. And this is the kind of the aortic root angle that I just show you here with the angle too. But then to really look at this, you can actually show this, just cut the thing across. You can see I got it, did a pretty good job here actually. And this will be the coplanar view of the surgical valve. And you can see now this is the two, one, two view that I talked to you about. So you can see the left main coming off when you do a semi-selective shot like this on the floral. So this is a very important view that you need to do at your workout for valve about in, in the time of the cast. This is the RAO view. And so now we've completed this. Let's look at the report. You can see now the measurements here all laid out. And I'm going to move the VTC here at the bottom. And of course, you'll do work on your access and aortic arch anatomy separately. Of course, you can save this. As a PDF to share with your heart team, and you can save the session as well. So that's it for the Paramount 2700 Vial Workup for Valve Vial Tavern. Hope you find this helpful, and we'll see you next time.